Hello everyone, welcome back. Thanks for waiting around as we should be ready shortly to dive into our second matchup of the day. Fnatic now going up against the team that was toppled in four overtimes. It was Hellraisers that unfortunately fell short against Luminosity. It should be a fun matchup for us as it goes down live in Denmark from the city of Odense. It should be fantastic. Of course, we've got to give a shout out to the city of Odense itself as it has provided already some highlight moments in the world of Counter-Strike as we continue to globe and discover more exciting locations to build our CS history. But I am joined, of course, by the final man himself. It is Snods to Hello. get into that second game of the day. Indeed, the second matchup today is going to be Fnatic Firechef against Hellraiser. Obviously, we just saw Hellraiser play on Cash versus LG, losing out in a fashion where we thought they'd bring it back. We thought once they went into overtime, this was the territory of the experienced players from Hellraiser on the new international lineup. But unfortunately, you know, LG, Brought together individual plays across the board, pulled them over the finish line, and managed to take it eventually, though, into fourth OT. Yeah, it's third OT, sorry, nearly fourth. Oh, yeah, nearly. very, very close very, to, very uh, nearly. to pushing it over the mark. But um, a long game, very grueling, yeah. obviously. You've got to imagine for the Hellraiser's side the fact that that's going to hit them quite hard. It was a major comeback that spanned a very long amount of rounds, nearly ended in them taking the victory, but in the end, LG were just too hot to handle. Do you know what the problem is, Jack? I feel like nobody wins from that first matchup. Yeah. The reason I feel like nobody wins is. If LG bring that one back, we have the story on that they brought it back from the face of defeat, 13 to four down. They then get the extra point or three points or two points if we went into OT. And then we could be seeing the upset on the cards, right? Taking down Liquid, potentially having the upset versus Fnatic, right? Unfortunately now they lose that versus LG. And then you go into the LG storyline. Well, now they're playing off against Astralis with the third matchup of the day. And they don't even get the full amount of points they get for beating Hellraisers. They only get two because they won in overtime and not three, which means I don't feel like anybody won in that scenario instead. Yeah. In terms of upsets, we could be seeing a very clear cut ending to group number eight. Yeah, it's true. As well, just for a factor of the, um, you know, just the inflated amount of rounds it went to. They left with a really horrible round difference. Obviously, not the full amount of points. It's still the same rules that we had from the online season, where if you do end up in overtime, you receive a lesser amount of points than what you would do for a full win. Yep. So it, it really does come back to bite either of those two sides, no matter what would have occurred or what the outcome would have been. So that first matchup, essentially a write-up for the development of the group. It means the <laughs> really is. top teams are still going to be able to do their damage. Obviously, only three spots for, to, for you to try and tackle. The room for an upset is now essentially gone. Yeah, it makes the Fnatic Liquid a lot more at ease going forward because obviously they don't want to be upset by... It's so easy for you to just be able to pick off opposition from such a ridiculous distance. Indeed it is. Versus the Deagles, though, Hellraisers are warding three AKs in an orb, so at range they still have the advantage. Dentifox goes for the peak. Crim spots that one towards Boiler, but apart from that, it will be heavy mid control gathered by her race. Once again, they're close in towards apartments. Some of the things you don't usually see in anti ecos or anti force buys on the T side. Angel encroaching around as the smoke will come out towards Libby. There's a response from Arch as well, so we can dive straight in and attempt to go for this push. He has his teammates behind him. They are ready for this, but Letcro will be coming through first with the CZ. Close range proximity works out well for him. So many kills starting to be racked up for Hellraisers now as they instantly destabilize any kind of defense that was brought to the table from Fnatic. Flusher, Bob and Weaver and the Deagle will land a massive uppercut to the face of Angel, though. Grabs himself the UMP as well. Debating how he now wants to play this round out as he's in a 1v2 with a fair amount of time to actually try and go for this. No defuse kill though, so that time is ticking away. Molotov comes out, an extra six seconds to delay the push from Flusher, but can peek over the Molotov action, have the range advantage with the UMP trying to push in and find the last frag. Finally, spots up with the bombers planted for. Can he stick it though? No defuse kit means the full 10 second defuse will flush out the peak from Wosik, but I don't believe he has enough time, Jack, so no defuse kit means. He will have to be considered that one. We'll save in the corner as well. At least he does get that orb though off the back of it. So gets through the round with at least something. Also took down every member on the side of Hellraisers. So even though their economy is getting quite big, quite fast, at least he tried to stop that expansion a little bit. Yeah, he can halt the, uh, halt the blossoming of the money from Hellraisers. But then again, from Hellraisers, fairly standard anti-eco been thrown out there. Not towards apartments, but towards arch. Going for the arch wrap, what that does is it gives you the extended range, okay? You smoke out library, you smoke out archway, run up from arch, and you have the distance of arch all the way towards apartments, all the way towards under under balcony, all the way towards the back of the site. And that range, the range disparity between the pistols and the AKs is what does claim them that fifth round. As we go into the next round of the first half here, that being the second. Or again for JW, this time they have far better utility, far better firepower. And M4 for flush up, no longer the UMP. 
as Fetz and Issa will slowly make their way towards apartments, taking control of it this time to force back the CTs back onto the site. And once you've done that job, Jack, half the battle's already won because then you can suddenly start to sell these fakes and try and work with the lack of information Fnatic have. The B site right now. With a few CTs that are quaking in their boots as they appear to have a reader towards what is going on over at Banana. This group to play getting set up from the side of Hellraisers as they begin to prepare themselves. Still a five versus five, 45 seconds left as the group outside B. Golden with a flashbang, flush with a Molotov, and the Molotov's really going to be the unsung hero in this scenario. If they could smoke off B right now, that would be perfect, but maybe the Molotov will do just enough. As Flush up sends it out potentially too early as he goes towards CT. As he begins to back off though, as the fake is sold, will they fall for this and force the other rotate? One man is coming over. The smokes, they can go towards CT, but Flusher denies it. So AJW even as he finds the frags, crims the massive spray and finds two. Down to Boyce and Fetz now. Can they isolate Lecro as the rotations come in via Arch? Swiftly moving into the site as Woxic tries to deal more damage with this orb. They are peeking him and giving him golden opportunities as Fetz follows it through as well. Takes down Lecro back into a 2v2. This is winnable for either side, especially Flusher who dives into action. Woxic, he's got three. He's ready for four and he wants more in the round. Golden. He has tiptoed his way up. He's got into close range. He has control of the bomb at this point. He can jump on it. Four seconds for the defuse. Woxic has to go for the face, but he's so slow. Golden should get the defuse for free. He will find the frag, but Fnatic will get around. Five to one. A four versus two somehow, some way turned into a one versus one. Hellraiser, they get the bomb down. They deny any players from Fnatic surviving as well to go forward with. Which, of course, means, Jack, the looming reset potential now the Hellraisers can dish out to Fnatic. The money is now low. Two UMPs, two M4s, an AWP for JW, one defuse kit for Golden. But apart from that, if Fnatic loses this round, the money will be reset. It goes 1-6. to six. They're going to be forced onto a low force buy. That could easily go 1-7 to seven if Hellraisers win. And then the eco will be dished out as well. We could very easily be looking at a 1-8 to eight scoreline going forward if Hellraisers can reset the money and send that cash back to zero for Fnatic. Push coming out towards mid here. Krims barely trying to get away, but instead he will still falter as he tries to take the fight against Issa, who will punish him with a Kalashnikov. They work their way through as well. JW caught his pants around his ankles. He was startled in that position and goes down. Angel is dealing a deadly amount of damage as he made quick work of two members of the Fnatic side. The site has been secured as well. That bomb has gone down. And once again, it's Golden last alive in this tight spot. He tries to make work of someone, but he couldn't quite find it. Issa will take him down. And Hellraisers, they bite back immediately. Fnatic right now, stunned. I mean, it's a well-timed pause. You're one to six down, you've just been reset. And look at the cash available for Fnatic. At best, they force this round of CZs, Kevlar, Light Utility, maybe one defuse kill onto one of these players. But the money is bare bones. The richest player is flush from $1,700. So the most he can afford, Jack, is CZ, Kevlar, Flash smoke, maybe even if he wants to sacrifice the utility for a defuse kit. He's not looking good right now for the Swedes. It's not at all. A very odd start, especially if you take things into account as well. This is your first seeded team from the European side of the bracket that is just... Online though, Jack, online. Yeah. <sighs> right now, I mean, I said, I said in the preface before this game as well, the lack of um, LAN, you know, how these players as a five has played on LAN. Obviously, there was WSG recently where they had Broland sub in for Crims. And then obviously E League Premier, they came eighth with their lineup. But apart from that, it's been it's been nothing. And it's really showing the not 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 jitters or nerves, but they need to get back onto that land tempo when the pace is risen. It's true, being able to adapt on the fly to the environment that you are left in. Right now though, let's see if Hellraisers can try and further this very effective T side that they've already been presenting us. It will be the eco coming up. Problem is, though, the money to the next round as well will be low, so probably going to be double eco coming from Atlantic. They took the pause to try and decipher how important the Kevlar, sorry, the utility is. One of the things they can do as well, Jack, is go for double up setup if they want to the next buy round. That could work fairly well. We know that Hellraiser has been going for fast plays. We've only seen an execution once, and that was on the anti eco where they smoked out library and they smoked out arch. Apart from that, it's all been contact plays, and you can counter that face style, that peaking style we've seen for the confidence of Hellraisers via the double orb. 
Flusher is looking very on point today, though. Flusher is at least awake, and he's been the one trying to really keep the, the team at least somewhat glued together in the majority of these rounds. Still finding frags even now, as he has been able to arm himself with a free AK-47 at least, so potentially something that could run amok into the next round. Moisik pushing this up as Angel finds that frag onto Golden. And now Flush with the AK. Ooh, she won that duel, but faster than the hunt is Moisik. No reason to overface it, give away the AWP. May as well just save and keep your money afloat. But it will find you W4. The timer does tick away, but actually the orb is lost. So money, not optimal going forward for Hellraiser. But the same can exactly be said when you look at the cash for Fnatic. Yeah. Can't actually reinvest into that orb, though. It would be a little bit risky if they do decide to go for it. So uh, well, they're actually going to go for the drop over and reinvest back through, interesting. It's a lot of cash wasted, but then again, they can take those risks or they, they can afford a rainy day, Jack. Yeah. They're 7-1 up. They're about to go versus another eco, eco as well. This is another, this is another uh, central money round, really, where you can have four or five stay alive, farm cash with Angels, Mac 10, and really get your money soaring. Very true. As Angel, obviously opting to go for the Mac 10, realizes the read into this round and can try and at least build up somewhat to reimburse them for their costly buy that they had to go for. Flusher, though, armed with the AK-47 that he scavenged. He wants to try and be the deciding factor that stops them from claiming B, but he will fall short on his journey. Crimp straight through the smoke strikes with a single head as he pops down one of the members on the side of Hellraiser's, leaving them with just a trio, Dead Fox, Wokstick, and Issa. They've secured B site control. They can now try and go for the plant as well. As Lecro and JW be swarming in, Dead Fox is just able to pick them off one by one, though. Issa should get this follow-up frag, which he will achieve. And that is another round now for Hellraiser's eight already at the half. When you look at it like this, they've essentially won the half pretty much on their T side. Oh, they have. Yeah, the, the best that Fnatic can do now is an eight to seven. Yeah. So as you said before, yeah, Hellraiser's have definitely won the half going forward as a bare minimum. They also have $9,000 in cash. They can now start to take risks. They can afford rebuys. If they do lose the current rounds, they can reimburse themselves going forward. This is where we could be seeing substantial, audacious plays from Mosek, pushes through smoke, some stellar individual plays if they want to try and run risks. But then again, stick to what's working. Don't try and fix what isn't broken. It's true. Stick to your guns. Don't let yourself down as this will continue on now. Battle of Banana appears to be coming out early on as Golden is trying to hold more of an aggressive stance with the orb, but instead will trickle back to a favorable position on the site. Will do indeed. Flashbang will ward him away. Smoke comes out towards top of Banana from Flusher, but there's a massive gap in it as well. And Dead Fox and Coco could maybe exploit that. No defuse kits for the CT side, Jack. So if the execution comes out and the bomb is planted, this could easily fall into double digits for Hellraisers. But let's see. Push comes in from JW from mid. Spots at the first. Oh, JW able to stay alive, though. That's the key factor. If it went into her favor of a trade, it would have been back to equal sounds, maybe even favoring the T's. But now Issa gets a chance at the action, takes down JW, leaving them into a 4v4 with the aggression coming out towards the A site. A fast rotate is on the cards, though, as Flusher will sprint his way back over towards Arch. Timing not really going to be as effective as well. Angel was holding that angle deep and could have taken him down if you would have waited, but instead Flusher gets the better of him. Oh, Hellraiser's no flush as a B player, leaving his golden last alive. Tries to land these flick shots. Spots the first in a four versus two. Now goes for the refaces, can't quite connect the shots. As the Molotov reigns in, will flush out the peak and eventually will be taken down Issa and Dead Fox alone. Oh, there's the spam through Issa, the, through the smoke. Three kills to his name. Gets such an impactful frag there as well. Has time to try and get that bomb planted, but if the push comes around, he should surely fall. Flusher! But Flusher runs into the Molotov due to his overconfidence. The mistakes were made, but luckily, Lecro was still there. Was indeed. And he will claim the second round for Fnatic. Two to eight, but again, it's the same narrative, the same storyline, Jack. One player surviving for Fnatic. If they get reset for a second time in this half, this could be a 11 to four, a 12 to three, very easily going forward. <sighs> it's true. It's one of those situations as well. It, it's just that reset for potential and the fact that Hellraisers, they've already been playing quite loosely. They've been playing quite adaptate, uh, adaptation or style of CS here. They've been switching up quite a lot. Fnatic have already proven that it's hard to read. The only rounds they have really been able to find success, they have to throw everything into the wind and hope that it sticks. The reason it's been hard to read is because the map control that Hellraisers are able to gather fairly easily towards middle and towards top banana as well. They molly out the corner, they flash, they face, they force the CTs back onto the site. With the lack of information, they capitalize off of it. Oh, Angel as well, look at this smart play against one, the combination crossfire there. They have to save. 
already as good as done at this point, essentially. They will be tiptoeing through as well. Issa seeming like he wants to try and take that fight towards apartments and see if he can find anything else for himself as all three of the players are essentially grouped up in close proximity towards that area. The only one far away is JW holding by Speedway. Five versus three. JW trying to play for exit kills. We'll find one. But I think to really amount to anything too spectacular. It will go nine to two as Crims, Lecker and JW try to save what's left of their CT side economy. Crims has given himself up as well. So this is now going to be going the other way around, trying to peek from balcony. Lecro is there. Lecro is getting the early tags off and will be able to peek around just enough to spot him out and take him down. But even then, at most, it's still only three players surviving. The other two will be left on pretty bad economy. They can still force out a buy, essentially, if all three of them save. But by no means is this going to be a healthy economy for that Fnatic side. So round last bonus has been reset back down to $1,400. They can drop over UMPs. Lecro, JW, and Krim. So we could be seeing, you know, two rifle, one AWP, and then two UMP buy coming up from Fnatic, which is definitely feasible. You can work around that, have the UMPs play close range. You can even try and contest map control now when you have the SMGs, or you can even give up map control on purpose. This sounds weird, but if they give up control of Top Banana, Flusher and Golden with the two UMPs, they can then molly the bottom of it, flash over and try Warden, just one or two players from the T side towards Top Banana, try and fight for map control in that way. We see LDLC do that heavily. It's very effective, especially the SMGs. That could be a way to do it. Problem is, though, is that toolbook, is that strategy in their arsenal? For a team like LDLC, you know that because that's a team that's very drilled. For Fnatic, they like that loose, ingenuitive style of CS where it's all based off instinct and they work so well as a team, as a unit. Well, here comes the push. As they oh. found their way through, they have no idea. Issa with the double entry. Absolutely flawless stuff there is. He slams in, bursts down on the rope like an SAS member and takes them both out in a matter of seconds. They've secured site control now as well. Fets can get that plant down absolutely scot-free. And Fnatic looks spooked. They weren't ready for that call from Angel. Very smart decision made there by the Hellraiser's captain. The reason being is, I said before, I'm expecting Fnatic to fight for map control now. And they did just that. All three players towards middle. Two towards quad, one boosted, one towards arch. They were ready for the smokes and the flashes to come in. They were fighting for the map control. Angel doesn't go back to those mid defaults or those banana defaults. Instead, ups the pace, ups the tempo. High octane style of CS as they burst out apartments. They catch Fnatic off guard. Angel, one step ahead. Ooh. Angel, now dead. As Golden will kill him with the UFP. Angel. <laughs> yeah, he's been sent off there, unfortunately for him. The Hellraisers, this is very, very effective. Very nice looking T side. Well played, well communicated, already looking as if there are major issues being shown by this Fnatic roster in this environment already. This CT side, way too many things going wrong. It needs to be adjusted and corrected soon, or they won't even have enough of a buffer to try and contest this on their T side. Then again, Hellraisers, they are Potentially stronger on the T side when you consider how drilled they are currently by Angel. Then again, on the CT side, they have many CT setups they can work around, especially maps like Cash we saw earlier. Go back over their old demos as well. Infer uh, Overpass is a very good map for them where they have set setups, set executes, and set plays. Let's see if Inferno falls into the same category as well, where even if Fnatic get five rounds here, Hellraisers can keep this one contestable on their CT side because we don't have the repeat of the first matchup of the day where we saw. 12 rounds won by both teams on their T side, and then both teams, LG and Hellraiser, are struggling on the CT side defense. JW trying to hold this contact angle towards B. Misses it, though. No opening shot and a fair bit of damage transferred towards him as well from the fire as he'll be scorched as he tries to get out. Flash is coming. Top banana is in control of Hellraiser. And this is where they can really dictate the pace of what's going to happen into this round. They have control of Top Banana. They can sell a fake towards A because look how passive Fnatic are. They've given up control towards mid. They're playing on the sites. But now that Arch Smoke has faded, JW peeking in towards middle. If the smoke comes out towards Archjack, forcing the CTs back, we could very easily be seeing an over-rotation coming out towards the A site or some poor mistaken plays. There it is. It's already coming to fruition. The rotate there. Let's flash up. We'll delve back in towards the A site. Second guess is it though, as he will be waiting place close towards Speedway. So he will actually be holding on B. He might have just saved his teammates' lives. 
Iss has a smoke, and he is towards second mid right now. Fetz has two flashbangs. I want to see Arch smoked out and flashes toward mid. Something to try and force Flush away from this B side. There's only 35 seconds left. Instead, the smokes are swimming through at the same time, though, so the rotate will not be forced off as the T's still wait, ready to try and burst in and explode through. They will now try and go for the play. Golden with one. Takes down Dead Foss as he was weak and so easy to do. Remove from the equation that B-site. Everyone oh hammering towards him. Angel with the entry as he works his way through. It's a double kill for him. Trying to continue this aggression onwards as the bomb and everyone else now on that T-side rotates back round. They have the B-site all off the back of an individual play from Angel. And the bomb will go down with two seconds to spare. Four versus three there. There is still a retake potential for the likes of Fnatic, especially now the Lekko JW find Frags, two versus three. That's the difference maker. JW coming in with that kill on towards Woxic because he's trying to get to more favorable angle. This is where things start to get switched on their head. Crims for the final frag there, blows away Angel off the back of the MP9, and they will receive that round. They get three now in the buffer, but they still need more. Crazy round there being called out by Angel. The problem was too many of those players were tagged up and got caught off as the bomb was planted. From the four versus three, it fell into a three versus two, unfortunately, for the T side. The underdogs going forward, and they're trying to see if they can have that ups upset, especially after such a poor start to the day, conceding their first match versus Luminosity. But as we go forward, penultimate round of the first half is we're going to round number 14. Orp again for Wozik, and now the double orb setup for the likes of Fnatic. Golden and JW can see if they can deny the contact faces, the contact plays from the likes of Hellraisers towards Banana and mid with the AWP. Angel, looking like he is tempting to uh, try and go for the face, but Woxic will go for the first peak. Golden takes him down as the orbs are looking fairly strong right now on the side of Fnatic with the double orb setup in play. JW and Golden definitely could be a power dynamic that could switch this half around now towards the last few rounds. Four versus five. How does Hellraisers now try to recalibrate themselves with the lack of their teammate? This comes out from JW. That will apply, apply pressure. But as I say that, as JW goes for the reface, finds that frag. Five versus three now, as it will be the two-man advantage for the likes of Fnatic. But there is still a minute on the clock here, Jack. They can slow this one down. There's no reason to suddenly force yourself into an A-site take when you are in a two-man deficit, especially now the flush has rotated over. They can slow the pace of this round down. They can go for the peak towards B. They know Golden's orping towards B. They've only got one smoke onto Issa. So they can smoke off CT, try and molly out coils, flash over. If they can get the bomb down with the smoke towards CT, there's definitely high chances for a retake going in their favor. Oh, Flusher gets one, but Fetz will be able to trade it back here off the response from his rifle. Fetz as well pushing straight in, trying to go for more of a ferocious play as he claws at Golden and oh, removes him. JW right. through the wall, though, will strike him down, leaving the bomb in a, a bit of an awkward spot. And Issa to try and clutch it out, finds the headshot on JW as he domes him back, tries to upgrade to the AWP as well. Issa caught off guard by Lecro, and that is a further round for Fnatic. One away now from at least getting themselves a five round half. Final round to the first half, four to ten. Hellraiser's claimed the pistol, had a substantial lead going forward. And now we're starting to see Fnatic gets getting settled on land and starting to really find their momentum and their footing into this matchup. They're starting to win the Angels. They're getting these advantages in the mid round, even when the bomb is planted. And that's what we want to see, especially when you're looking at the roster of such veterans, such as Crims, Flusher and JW and whatnot. Anyway, though, it will be fast play towards A. All five members from Hellraiser's closed up towards mid. They can go for an execute now. Smoke off mini pit, smoke off arch, and go fast up quad, or vice versa, up arch. The world is their oyster. As Angel goes for the peak towards mid, trying to see if he can dice out or force that on over face from some of the Fnatic. You can see the utility usage working quite well to at least keep them at bay, but it's a. Uh is going to be able to face anyhow as he takes the fight out from Boiler, takes down Crims already. A weakness now towards the A site, so they're going to have to uh, actually force more manpower towards it, which leaves B even more susceptible to this attack. Golden uses his smoke with a minute left on the clock. In terms of utility, only having the Molotov to try to work with. 55 seconds left, flush up still towards speed, where's the hat? The soul comes in towards B, lands two! but eventually gets traded out. Three versus three, but the B bomb site is now in control of the demeanor of Hellraisers. 
Gamble pays off those knots. Let's see if they can now do any more on the retake because it is a 3v3. Free free. They're hammering in from all angles, attempting to be fast on their feet to get the drop on the opposition. There is a response, though. Hellraiser's wildly spamming towards the void, hoping to just tag someone or at least whittle something off, slow them down ever so slightly enough to allow Hellraisers to find success in the round. Mount the pressure on them. Fetz, though, he's the man that is going to be key to success. He gets one, but not the second. Lecro is able to take him down. JW will also fall, and Issa will nail Lecro against the wall. They get 11 rounds at the half on the side of Hellraisers. If they get the pistol, they are going to be in such a ridiculous spot. They will indeed fight out after short break. We're back, everyone. Hello, as we dive straight into this one. Damage being done here from Angel towards bottom. Bananas, who finds the headshot on towards JW. There is a response coming out from the side of Fnatic, but not enough to take down Angel. Oh, they know exactly what the bomb is as well. Towards T-Steps, close towards T-Sport, but the T's do not control of it. Crims as his best finds one. Two versus one. Lecro, the bomb is in control of the CT side. They will go for the double face. One, two, peak, but still. Oh, for a second there, when Lecro found that frag, I thought there was a chance, but a well-timed peek there, the aggression to counter out the push there. 12 to 4, Jack. The first game of the day, we saw a resurgence, a revitalization from Hellraisers on the team, so they brought it back from 13 to 4 at the face of defeat. Is Fnatic going to do the same? I'm not quite too sure. It's going to be hard for them, especially now in the snow. They are left in Hellraisers with the bind that's coming out as well. If they can continue this lead that they have and really further that standpoint, it's going to be so hard for Fnatic to even mount anything and have a buffer to actually afford to lose round and makes mistakes. Two Famuses, three SMG buys as well. As the bomb was not planted, Fnatic will be going for the force buy. And they may have to force for the rest of the half jackers, sort of, even if they lose this round. If this goes 4 to 13, they're going to have to continuously buy and buy again as they desperately need, need rounds on the board. They do have three smokes to work with. They can smoke out Arch, smoke out Mini Pit, go for a sight take. As they will smoke out quad, and here comes the burst towards the site from apartments. It's, uh, it's a nice angle, though. It's quite effective, especially with the flashbang coming over. They don't try and clear it. It's a little bit awkward, so he will get a double kill. Golden will only find one kill before he is traded out there from Woxic. Angel, as well, should now have free reign to finish and polish off the final remaining members, and he will do just that. Hellraisers get themselves another round, and they edge their bets ever closer to finding success here and picking up this victory. So at least they will go 1-1 so far in terms of games. 4-13. Fnatic, do they force by into this one where they are desperate in need of claiming rounds of the board, or will they just concede this one, go for the eco, and it seems like it will be the latter, as they will be just be on to clock, saving all the money they can. No PT50, since they want the extra $300 to afford a flashbang or a smoke extra into the next buy round. And that next buy round may be the last one, Jack, as this is looking very, very poised to go 14 to 4. And with that, a substantial 10 round advantage for Hellraisers going forward. And this is a round as well with these SMGs where. Versus the Glocks, they can really stack up their cash, have four or five stay alive, deny themselves having to drop over weaponry, and find kills with these SMGs to stack up the $600 a piece. Oh, talk about racking up cash as well. It's with a double kill off the back of the MP9 peak like that. Not only does he find both of those frag snods, he also gets gifted the bomb. So even if there was potential for some shenanigans or some hijinks to come out from the side of Fnatic, it would not be occurring today. Fets and Deadfox are the final two kills as well. Hellraiser's ever closer to finding success. And not only that, they're now one round away from match point and having that safety net as overtime below them. They just need to topple Fnatic on this buy that is coming out now. The five rifle setup. Round number 19, four to 11. <sighs> they wish, four to 14, apologies. As Fnatic gonna be going for the five AK buy, decent utility, but they are lacking the AWP into this one. As Nade saw off towards Banana. 
Angel expects heavy banana contestion to come out from Fnatic, and he is correct. As it will be Gold and a coach want to see if they can steal away control towards Banana. Dead Fox loses his head early. As is the former five or through the smoke. Fets will get that trade frag. Four versus four. Yeah, this is good as they ping straight in and deal that early damage. Obviously, the contestion has been done. But look at the amount of early damage that has been tagged up towards those Fnatic players. Flusher, minus 20. Lecro as well. Tagged down to just 32. This isn't as effective as they would have wanted it to go in the Battle of Banana on the early round. Really makes them so much more weaker. And they don't have as much sustain to try and survive. But they are still going to be grouped up and risking it all. They're putting their eggs into one basket. Let's see if this basket is going to hold or if Angel will smash straight through it as he waits with the Fama. Smoke going to go down as well, so they're burning off even more time from the clock, really forcing Fnatic's hand. Do Fnatic wait out the smoke or will they just contact through it? And the answer is they will do. Fast play towards CT from JW. He has to win the duel versus Angel. He does just that. Catches him off guard. Lecro finds the anchor of the site as Fetz is taken down. Wosik and Issa in the two versus four, and you may as well just save your AWP and utility with the FAMAS as well. They can still buy into the next round, I believe, after winning fairly cleanly versus the Ecos. Yeah, so at least they will be actually be able to hold on to these weapons way too far away from those Fnatic players. They can afford to try and go for the hunt a little bit, but really if they lose too many weapons, they're going to be absolutely broken as they don't have a chance to build their economy stably at this point. So Woxic and Issa are essentially given a get out of jail free card. They can come back through into the next round and try and continue the level of damage that we have been seeing quite consistently from this Hellraiser's side. Nevertheless, if you look at it on paper though, it will now be five rounds for Fnatic. They can try and project this forward, but it's just the fact there really is a very, very small margin for error. If we see another round go to Hellraisers, they've basically got guaranteed overtime. They will have at least a 10 round buffer to work with. It's way too hard to try and topple that. Yeah, I mean, what? There's no margin for error. As you said, you make one mistake, it's over if, if Hellraisers can get to that 15th. But then again, they still need to get there. And Fnatic's a team that we know isn't going to be choking on LAN or giving up early, they can still bring this one back. Five AKs once again. Are we going to be seeing contestion once more towards Banana? As that might be the point to really fight for going forward. Can Hellraiser deny control towards Banana? I think they can. Or oh, Dead Fox can. As he peeks out, gets one, rips the head clean off of Golden, but Flusher will return the favor. Woxic as well coming in, the Battle of the Orpers, but JW was not fast enough as Woxic will strike against him with that big green gun. Four versus three. Minute 30 left on the clock after the early aggression. The Fnatic now they need to slow the pace down. They know that they're still two towards B and they can chain those smokes over and over again. And you can see Angel retrieving the smoke off the dead fox body. And what that means is he can smoke out Banana once again and deny the push. Or can he? Oh, they are getting ready. Angel going to be trickling back ever so slightly. Smart read as well as that Molotov would have been transferring a ton of damage towards him. He peeks out, but you can see the panic there. He needs to try and pull back and just stay alive, but will hold for the push, gets one, so at least they trade effectively. It's just on Flusher and Crims, this dynamic duo. Can they whip out some timeless CS, though, into this round, or will it amount to nothing? And Hellraisers will secure their 15th round. They've secured site control. They will now attempt to go for the plant as Flusher will punch in those numbers. They can fall back, play from post part positions, and attempt to just hold for this oncoming onslaught. Man advantage here for Hellraiser. Fetch is slow. You can try to use him as a uh, as bait, essentially. Have him go first. Trade that frag if you're Issa or Wosik. You have the fuse go onto Wosik. Flashbangs as well to try and blind and allow yourself to win these angels going forward. They are going in as a unit. They want to try and take it as a duo and a oh, single man. Right. Woxic always going huge into these rounds. He finds that initial frag. Flusher, though, quickly flicking around, trying to continue it with a first oh. headshot. Nearly the fur, but he couldn't quite get it. Goes down. Issa will be able to secure victory over them. Just in the nick of time, I think he has this defuse. 15 rounds for Hellraisers. Way too close for comfort there. 15 to 5, 10 match points now for Hellraisers going forward. Issa on 25 frags and only 20 rounds being played out. When we casted their debut, Jack, we were harping on Wosik and Issa. If you remember as well, their first Pro League games, it was always Issa on 6 or 10 kills and they were losing close matches. And it seems like he's really blossomed and evolved into such a strong player. And there you have it. Making his home country proud as it is the international misfit lineup of Hellraisers. They find the frags was middle early. Trying to see if they can conquer any aggression or any confidence Fnatic had left in the tank. Yeah, that's basically just projecting what they want out of this round. The fact that they want to close it down right here, right now. They have bloodlust for this victory. Hellraisers, they must be furious off the back of what occurred earlier with LG. They don't want that to happen again. And it's looking like they are coming for their first victory here in the group stage. 
so. Five versus four. Man advantage in favor of Hellraisers. As they are heavy stacked towards B, they have Warsuk playing towards Arch, who will have decent early information. As the smoke comes out towards Archway, we'll make him fall back eventually. Is he going to fall back towards site? Is he going to play towards mini pit? Is he going to play passive? Are they going to be playing for a retake jack as they have the man advantage and the defuse kit? Three players set up towards this B bomb site. They will be battling it out against the troublesome trio of these terrifying terrorists on the Fnatic side that are. Getting themselves just on the edge of bursting in. Lecro as well with a swift headshot as he makes quick work of Issa. But can he deal with his backup? Woxic is there. As soon as they find this frag as well, it will allow Woxic to begin his rotate over towards that B site and aid his teammates when the push comes in. His contact will be given now. Crims takes down Angel, making it easier and easier for success into this round, especially when Woxic falls like that. It's all up to Fetz. It's a 1v2, but they are staggered in the push. They cannot work together just yet as Lecro is late to the scene of the crime. Fetz, though, bobbing and weaving, tries to take Take down Flusher as long as he can wean them off. Seven seconds essentially just has to stay alive now as this push comes through and he will win the round and find success for Hellraisers. He knows he's done it. He will pick up the victory. 16 to 5 is the scoreline. Fnatic unable to close it down there in even a round that was essentially in their hands at that point. It goes the way of HR. Yeah, Cinderella story there for the likes of Hellraisers. A 16 to 5 finish as the international lineup destroys Fnatic and a map like Inferno as well. One of their legacy maps when yeah. you think about years ago, how strong they were. Olaf, Maestro and Crims towards that B-bombs that were untouchable. And ever since then, you know, how on earth is, when you look at their roster as well, I mean, this is the team that just lost to Luminosity in triple overtime, has now 16-5 Fnatic on Inferno. And the thing is, it's the style they did in it as well. It was textbook Counter-Strike, was slow, methodical, called by Angel, where if Fnatic took control of Banana, instantly they took real estate and counter mid control towards mid. They played it slow. They forced out over rotations. They forced out fakes. They whittled down the clock. We know how, you know, the Ukrainians, not just Zeus, but also Angel, they like to play that slow passive style of T side where they really make uh, the CTs work for their information and work for themselves. Yeah, it's true. And in the end, it just does go the way of Hellraisers just playing. I mean, basically just outclassing them in terms Surprisingly, of the Surprisingly, yeah. I mean, it, is it... Because we haven't really been seeing too much of this five roster from Fnatic on land. Their last land was WSG, where there was uh, Broland, I believe it was, instead of Crims. That was recently. But before that, it was E-League Premier, where they came eighth as this five roster. So going forward, do they potentially need more experience as this five on land? Potentially. Yeah, it's true. They need some kind of keys to actually make this work, because right now it looks starved for ideas really not all those rounds it was more so just key individual plays that won them around a lot of it comes back to flusher being able to demolish we saw lecro stepping up as the game went on golden as well i feel like for me was the mvp of fnatic allowing them to at least get consistent impact he was frags. landing some nice kills the problem was you know the pistol round is four exit frags some of these other rounds as well the game was already over at that point and there's also saving coming out from the likes of fnatic right angel would have a a great call like, whether it be an over rotation flusher went towards a leaving god alone towards the b site and then they have to save three versus five with the bombers planted b or vice versa towards a those are the rounds where angel expected heavy mid contestion from fnatic towards mid and he countered with an ass burst smart diligent play and uh, essentially they're able to uh, overthrow and conquer fnatic one of the favorites of the group to make it up so there you have it, obviously. Luminosity took victory over Hellraisers. Hellraisers now take victory over Fnatic. Moving on, the next game of the day will be Astralis facing up against Luminosity. A bit of an interesting one for you Danish fans out there. Obviously, it should be an explosive affair. That will be covered by Harry and Hugo here on the secondary stream up shortly. ESL Pro League is brought to you in part by Intel, the city of Odense, NVIDIA GeForce GTX. Lenovo Legion, Bedway, Pay Safeguard, Logitech G, Tinderbox, Mountain Dew League, Xfinity, and ESEA.